Hey everybody, Miss Natalie here, coming to you from the preschool and kindergartners, children's worship room, and the Sunday school room at church. Do you guys miss it? I miss you being here a lot, but we are going to get through it. But today, what I'm doing is I want to tell you guys the second half of the story of Jonah. So if you didn't listen to the church service on Sunday, two days ago, get your grown-up to go back and listen to the service, because I tell the first part of the story of Jonah. But there's more to the story of Jonah. We all know sort of the cool part of Jonah, where he gets thrown into the sea and he gets swallowed by the big fish. And God keeps him alive in the big fish, and then he gets spit out. But it's not as common to know the rest of the story of Jonah. In fact, I didn't really know the whole story of Jonah until I was a grown-up. So I don't want you guys to be in that same situation as me. So I'm going to tell you the whole story of Jonah. So like we always do, we're going to sing the song that we sing before we listen to a story from the Bible. Will you guys sing it with me? I hope so. Here we go. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that So Jonah was a prophet. Prophets are people who listen to and speak the word of God. God had told Jonah to go to Nineveh to tell them that they had wicked ways and that God was going to judge them. But Jonah had said no and had gone away in the opposite direction. But still God found him on the boat that he had taken and the sailors had thrown Jonah into the sea and God had prepared a fish to swallow him. Now Jonah was in this fish for three days. In this fish, Jonah prayed a beautiful prayer. But that prayer is not our story today. After three days, God caused the fish to spit out Jonah. And this time, Jonah went to Nineveh. Nineveh was an enormous city. So big, it took three days to walk around it. And it was full of people. People everywhere. And Jonah spoke the word of God. He said, he shouted to the crowds, 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. Well, the people of Nineveh believed God's message. And from the most important to the least important, they said, we are not going to eat any food. We are going to not wear our fancy clothes. We are going to put on plain clothes of 
burlap that is scratchy and itchy and will make us remember that we were not following God before. And even the king, the king of Nineveh heard what Jonah was saying. He stepped down from his throne. He took off his royal robes and he put on scratchy, itchy burlap. And he sent his nobles throughout the city to say, no one, not even animals, may eat or drink anything. Everyone must pray earnestly to God. They must turn from their evil ways and stop all their violence. Maybe even yet God will change his mind and hold back his fierce anger from destroying us. Well, when God saw and heard what they had done and how they did put a stop to their evil ways, he changed his mind and he did not carry out the destruction he had threatened. Now Jonah This made Jonah angry, and he complained to the Lord about it. He said, Didn't I say before I left home that you would do this, Lord? This is why I ran away to Tarshish. I knew that you are a merciful and compassionate God, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. You are eager to turn back from destroying people. Ah, oh, just kill me now. I'd rather be dead than alive if what I predicted doesn't happen. The Lord replied, is it right for you to be angry about this? Well, Jonah went to the outskirts of the city and waited to see what happened to Nineveh. Well, the Lord God arranged for a leafy plant to grow really, really fast, spreading its broad leaves over top and shading Jonah from the sun, and it was a relief to him. Oh, Jonah was so grateful for this plant. But then the next day, God arranged for a worm to eat the roots of the plant, and it withered and died. And as the sun grew hot, God arranged for a wind to blow on Jonah and the sun beat down on his head and the hot wind was blowing until he grew faint and wished to die. Oh, death is better than living like this, he exclaimed. Then God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be so angry because the plant died? Yes, Jonah retorted. Then the Lord said, You feel sorry about the plant. It came quickly, and it died quickly, and you did nothing to put it there. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people living in spiritual darkness. Shouldn't I feel sorry for such a great city? And weirdly enough, that is where the book of Jonah ends. We don't know whether Jonah learned 
the lesson that God wanted him to learn, which was, yeah, I am. Exactly how Jonah complained, which was merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love and eager to turn back from destruction. Jonah thought that was something to complain about. The rest of us think that's pretty awesome. But we don't know whether Jonah learned that, okay, yeah, I was really sorry about this plant that was up and down in one day, and I wasn't at all sorry about all those people from Nineveh. I should be more sorry about the people from Nineveh. We don't know. I hope that he did. I hope that Jonah learned to be more compassionate. And that's our story. It's a bit of a funny one that we don't have a good solid ending to it. But sometimes it is like that. We don't know whether somebody has learned. But we keep going because you and me, we can learn to be joyful that God is loving and merciful and slow to be angry and that he can change his mind from deciding to destroy people. And we can learn to always be compassionate. And I think that's something I hope that Jonah learned. See you guys. I love you.